Justice League International number 10, written by Dan Jurgens, art by Aaron Lepresti. Uh, technically, this picks up from Fury of Firestorm issue 9, so check that out if you haven't, but it can be read without it. So we open up with the team currently, which is Batman Booster, Godiva, Batwing, uh, Guy Gardner, Omac, and August General making their way back to the United States. And they land right next to the Statue of Liberty. And basically they're like, okay, so that last issue was a total waste of our time, which is why I say you can avoid it. So they're kind of all iffy about each other right now. Omax just wants to get back to good. Guy Gardner wants to get back to ice. Like, you know, everyone's going their own little separate ways shortly. Um, and Guy specifically flies off. We then cut to somewhere in Brooklyn where a dude is running back into his home. And his name is Malik, and he goes and he talks to his brother Malcolm, who is the Lightweaver guy who attacked them like two issues ago. And he's like, what do you do? Are you turned into a life of crime? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. How's your job hunt going on? And what about your house that's about to be foreclosed on? And he's like, don't, don't give me that. And Lightweaver's like, dude, the system sucks. Everything about it sucks. Let's just burn the system to the ground. That's what I'm doing. And so he flies off, and now it's like, that's not, that's a bad idea. And then we're done with that. Then we cut to Guy, who's talking to Ice in the hospital, and he's just like, hey, babe, look, I know I'm not really, like, you're not my babe anymore, but, like, I'm here in case you need me. I'm not going anywhere, so uh, hope that counts. Just trying to get in her good graces again. Then we have David Zavimbe, a.k.a. Batwing, go into Vixen's room. She's actually awake. And they talk briefly, and uh, I'm not sure that Vixen knows that David is Batwing, because he just says how he's in town for business, police stuff. Uh, but he basically breaks the news to her, like, hey, by the way, um, you might be paraplegic, which she's like, yeah, the doctors have said that. And he's like, right, right. Also, they are disbanding Justice League International. She's like, no, they can't. They, they have to keep going. If I can't be part of the team, someone must take my place. Wink, wink. Uh, and then we see Booster and Godiva in Fire's room. And they're like, she's she's slipping into a coma. And the longer that goes on, the worse it gets. So, I, I, and Booster's like, I can't help but feel like it's all my fault. And Godiva's like, it's not your fault. You didn't, you didn't set the bomb. You have to move on. And they, like, nearly kiss. And then they break away. They're like, well, that's, <clears throat> that's awkward. So then we meet Omak and August General. August General, who has been narrating a lot of this issue... Uh, they're up on top of a roof, and Omax basically like, dude, I need to change back into a person. Let me talk to Batman so I can do that. And August General's like, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. Maybe there's not a way you can. Maybe you should be like coming to terms with your new situation. When I came to terms with my situation of how I look, I realized how much I was able to do for my country. And Omax's like, yeah, that's great for your country, but what about you? Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? And August General's like, um, and Omax's like, yeah, exactly. So then Batman shows up, but before he can even, they can even say anything, he's just like, all right, everyone, we, we got a tracking satellite thing that saw white Lightweaver's signal light up. So we're going to go get them. Let's get the team together and go. So then we go to Washington, where the team, which they reveal themselves named as burners later on because they burn down the system, uh, they're seeing all these... All these protests outside the Capitol building that have things like fair share and no more wealthy elites. Topical. So basically, this is a breakdown. He's in charge and he's like, look, these people, they're just puppets to a system that of the ruling class. We're going to tear down that system and give them back their freedom. And they basically are just going to do the fight club method where they're literally just going to burn it to the ground and everyone starts at zero again. So... There's that. Uh, Late Weaver shows up and he's like, all right, yep, I'm, I'm definitely in on this, guys. I do not have my doubts. And he makes this giant, like, kaiju thing out of solid light. And everyone's like, all right, this should do it. Let's march on down to Washington. And as soon as they get out of the warehouse that they were hiding in, Guy Gardner is there with his own Green Lantern construct of a giant guy. And he just punches the kaiju in the face. And then just a battle starts. And... I don't remember half of these people's names. There's Intersec, Light Weaver, and Breakdown. And then there's like a techno one who's just like a kid. I don't know his name. They don't say his name. But 
he's here. So regardless, he's fighting August General. It's just bouncing off of him. And Breakdown's like, nobody panic, just fight them. And so they all get into a fight. And literally, the Justice League has the upper hand the entire time. Like, they are about to knock out everybody except for, like, Intersec. And uh, because of that, Breakdown, as soon as he's down on the ground, he's like, hey, Intersec, do the thing. And so Intersec goes up in the sky away from all of them. And she's apparently able to intercept any signal and change it to her own will. So she changes the signal between Guy Gardner and his power ring. And she changes the signal between Booster and his, like, gloves that shoot energy blasts. And he makes it so they both start firing on their own teammates. And then they fire on each other. Thus effectively knocking out the entirety of the Justice League. Like, no problem. Which seems a bit OP to me, especially because Breakdown's whole power is he can turn stuff into nothing. He can just dust it away. Somehow intersects the powerful one. Regardless, they're like, all right, cool, should we kill him? And Breakdown's like, no, we're going to go down to Washington and we're going to hold up these so-called heroes, the people who are protecting the system, and we're going to kill them on the Capitol steps. And that's where they leave off. So there's an issue in writing of... You need to make the bad guys sympathetic, meaning that you can understand why they feel the way they do, which, yes, I get it. I think anybody alive today understands why these villains feel the way they do. Whether or not you agree that they are going about solving those issues in the right way is completely separate. But we, I think that we all agree we, we know how they feel the way they do. The issues then arise when... You agree with their point of view more than the heroes. And considering the heroes don't really have a point of view right now. Like, what have these guys done? Breakdown has killed like three people. Totally, yes, no, take him away. What have the other ones actually done? That the Justice League is fighting them. Not much. Like, they atta- the Lightweaver attacked the Justice League, but it's never been like a crime against humanity or anything like that. They haven't done anything. They're just like... The other three are just, like, protesting. So it's kind of a weird spot. Um, But no, I like this. I'm down with the story arc. I do think that they're kind of putting in too much effort to explaining why we're changing the team members. Like, they're like, no, Batwing, you have to join in Dixon's place because it's her wish for you to do so. And it's like, he can just join. Like, we don't have to go through this explanation of why OMAC is sticking with the team because he wants Batman's help. Like, he can just join. We don't have to go through this whole rigmarole. I understand for character development's sake, but, like, the first characters just joined. We don't We don't have to. They could just do it because they believe in good. We don't have to go through a whole thing. Regardless, I'm going to go ahead and give this one a 7. Just standard issue, pretty good. Nothing too much wrong with it, but nothing too great about it either. Um, the, uh, the only thing is, like, they got to make sure these villains are a lot more villainous moving forward because otherwise I'm probably going to side with the villains side of things before too long. <laughs>